Hello, hello, hello. All right. We are back for episode six. Yes. Um, this is, oh, I was oh. trying to think of an intro, but I didn't yeah. have one. But <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you, you about oh. if you, what are the updates on the picket lines? Have you seen oh, any picket line okay. updates? Any Okay, okay. Any picket signs that have piqued your uh, interest? What's uh? What are the writers saying on the block? I'm gonna be honest. I'm not. The signs feel not my personal jam, and it's not that I don't think they're creative and funny. I just I spend a lot of time on Twitter, and mm-hmm. I just feel like I'm like okay, like I've seen 19 signs back to back to back. <laughs> There will be tweets like, and some, sometimes it's the same sign or it's different. It's like, I cannot tell you how many times I saw the the um, the sign uh, with from Quinta AI uh-huh. can't write Tori yeah, Trapps. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. And the first time I saw it, I thought it was so funny. And then I was like, wow, four the days later. Time it was yeah. Not. And my entire timeline is this and would you marry a bus driver? You know what I mean? It's too much. So <laughs> I will say um, that something I didn't know that I've learned, mm-hmm. um, I didn't realize that the ask was a 3% increase, like a 3% raise. The, the money increase, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. 3%? Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm I like, know. reach for the stars, guys. <laughs> reach for the stars. I, I think it's... It's going to be rough for the next few weeks that, you know, a lot of the CEOs are very unserious. David Zaslav has said, yes, (laughs) he has said, uh, the love of work will get these writers back to the writers. Like, yeah, but the beauty of being a writer is also like they can also love their work and also write their own projects and like not be paid for those. They would like to be paid for your projects. Right. So you're actually not winning. Yes. You're not winning this argument. And then I don't know what happened, but another CEO came under fire in the past week. Uh, Maybe it was uh, uh, an executive at Paramount or at Comcast. I don't, or Peacock. I don't really know why I'm confusing them, but a similar, same situation. And I saw a tweet that said that basically like all the streamers together you know, in like the first, you know, couple of days of the of the strike, their stock prices had fallen a combined $10 billion, which is like, whoa, it's looking <laughs> real crazy. How about we uh, wrap this up? Uh, and then I think the final thing that I'll share on my update list um, is there's a list. And unfortunately, I don't remember if it was Variety. Um, Mm -hmm. But there's an ongoing list of shows impacted by the strike. Oh, Um, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, As you can hear my little clickety clack. Any of your faves? Uh, My fave, uh, my my actual fave uh, succession was uh, not succession. Whoa, sorry. Hey, join the Uh, join the club. No, 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 no. This is that's ending. So we're good. Yeah, I was like, that's truly propaganda seeping into my brain, and I hate that. Um, (laughs) My fave, Severance, stopped filming today. Uh, They who knows when that's coming back. I know, and honestly, they really did what needed to be done. Uh, I know that Loot stopped filming. I know that SNL got canceled. And Pete Davidson, uh, speaking of Severance, Kieran Culkin and Jennifer Coolidge were going to do the last couple episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I also know that Stranger Things shut down production. I did hear about Stranger Things, yeah. Yeah, what about you? Any signs? Any? Honestly, the the one I was going to say is the... (laughs) The ridiculous David Zaslav one that you said. Yeah. That like, I'm like, what is up with CEOs when people ask for more money? And they're like, let the love of work power you. Like, what? <laughs> what? what is that? Like, what, I'm like, well, it sounds like... The love of work doesn't pay my rent. $250 million would make me love my job, too. But, Very much. Very you much. You know. You know. Not to mention, I think he's like the highest paid executive yeah. CEO out there. So, I like, was, why don't you slash that in half? He's the second highest in that the other exec who like is like higher than him, but he doesn't run a network, but he runs a talent agency is this guy, Ari Emanuel, who I didn't know. 
Um, but I saw, I saw a graphic sometime this week and I did share it. He is, after Googling him, the guy that inspired Entourage. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I've heard of him. Yeah, he makes like three hundred and like eight, you know, million dollars. So he's at the top. Uh, wow, and then wow. it's and then it's David at two fifty, and then after that it's Bob Iger, aka Bob Number One slash Bob Number Three, and then Bob <laughs> Number Two came in next. Bob Chapek is that his name, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And then I think after that the next one was Rupert Murdoch. Bob's. I know. I literally, I love to go a Bob one, Bob two, and Bob one is also Bob three. Uh, circle like back. It's a lot Close of the Bobs. <laughs> uh, and then the Netflix CEOs, and then I think the top like eighth person is uh, at Comcast. So yeah, to me that's like their the biggest like leg that they don't have to stand on is like all these executives make millions of dollars. Yeah, and to me that's like the biggest selling point as to why you should be paying these writers more. Like everyone else's salaries have gone up and theirs hasn't. I yeah. What, what that's, huh? And it yeah. starts with them. It's uh, definitely crazy. Um, I did find an article in Variety while we're talking about the shows that have been canceled so far. Um, they've added Stranger Things, Evil, Blade, which... Wow. Oh, yeah. Rings of Power, the MTV Movie Awards. Um, oh, and right. then uh, this was already on the list, but I actually didn't know this. And I do think this is kind of interesting. But um, Big Mouth, they oh. were six weeks into writing the eighth and final season of the show. The creators would have finished in August without a strike. So, uh-huh. yeah. And Cobra Kai also is on this list. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Them's some pretty popular Netflix shows. Yeah, yeah. Yellow Jackets. So Ted Sarandos better get it together. Oh, I don't watch Yellow Jackets, but I know a lot of that's pretty popular. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so that's our update. Uh, that's our writer oh, strike update. update. Yeah, we'll circle back. Because this is, a, after all, a uh, sort of trades podcast. You know, we're here to talk about the business. And that includes the business of these fools who are saying ridiculous things. Get wow. my people paid. Okay, let them go. Free them of the shackles of <laughs> free them poverty. It's giving the pharaoh, the prince of Egypt, let my people go. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I digress. I digress. So I will just say, this episode we're going to talk about IP and franchises. And instead of giving some little cutesy intro, Sankara, what does IP stand for, and what is it? Yeah, so this is kind of like a part two to our previous episode. Um, so it's still sort of what in the realm of, you know, our the last episode's I, name was, are there no more original ideas? And we sort of focus on adaptations. And so we wanted to also focus on the other side, which is the big IPs and the big franchises. Um, the biggest one people probably know nowadays is, I think, probably Marvel. I would say, probably like the that's consumed life as it seemed for the past fifteen years. Uh. (laughs) Um, And IP really stands for intellectual property. Um, And IP is not really a like quote unquote media specific term. A lot of things can be IPs actually. Um, And but in the context of media, it really it usually sort of refers to like the original owner of the idea where the word came from. Um, and that being, you know, written for screen, uh, Marvel in particular, to keep using that example, um, is IP and a franchise, I guess that's why it's so big, or there's been, let's put it this way. There's been multiple franchises, um, under the IP umbrella, which is Marvel. Um, for sure. I mean, and each, I guess, yeah, go ahead. And I guess the, in terms of like quote unquote, who the owner of that would be. I'd say probably the most forward facing one for Marvel would probably be Stan Lee, who passed away, I think, a couple of years ago. And that's probably the one people know the most because he like had this running thing where where he would like get a really small part in every single movie dating back to I think the first Iron Man all the way back in 2008. Mm -hmm. I think he was in everything except for the first um 
the first movie, which was The Incredible Hulk. Yep. Yeah, The Hulk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I watched it. I watched all the movies in order in like 2019. And look was, at you. Well, it was because when I saw Black Panther, I had critiques and criticisms. And my boss was like, Well, have you seen the other movies? And I was like, <laughs> Bet. Lucky for you, I don't have anywhere to be. So I'll see you next week. And I went back, <laughs> watched them in order, and ranked them as I went. And I think at the time, I ended up with that pretty high up. I really did like, uh, I really did like that Iron Man, even though Edward Norton, I mean, not Iron Man, that uh, Hulk, even though Edward Norton hated mm-hmm. it and fumbled the bag. But yeah, he was like, I'm never doing this again. Little did yeah. he know. <laughs> but also, <laughs> to be fair, like, if you're someone who's like comfortable, I don't know, playing a freaking That's true. Hockey, Good point. Right? Like, I don't know that Marvel's your bag. Like, I, yeah. don't, I don't know how you do that. And then also, you know, he got to do... Um, he got to do Glass Onion. So, I mean, he's done That's other true. things, but I feel like he... Maybe he didn't want his life devoted to this for 15 years. Which is why, you know, some of the people are just like, yes, please free us. Kill off my character with the snap. Free me. <laughs> Truly. Chris <laughs> Evans, right? Like, he yeah. was like, I ain't coming back. Like, I got other stuff to do. And then <laughs> he, he puts definitely out, did say that. He puts out Ghosted on Apple. That was trash. Oh, I didn't watch it yet. <laughs> this is not a ghosted podcast, but that was not <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> so that's IP. So franchises. Um, I guess the way we can say define franchises would be it's basically like a collection of films in succession that sort of like share the same universe, um, or that are marketed sort of like a, a series, like a one, two, three, four, or five. So think like Harry Potter think uh obviously anything marvel uh star wars anything that like share has like a shared universe would sort of be franchises Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the reason why i thought this was interesting to bring to do to talk about is nowadays i feel like a lot of movies and studios sort of have gone to an IP and franchises model. Um, and we sort of rarely see the standout sort of like original film. Um, and by that, I would say like, well, now it's a franchise and that sort of goes towards my point, but Knives Out, right? So like when the first Knives Out right. came out, that was like sort of like an original movie, an original idea, right? But because of sort of like, where I feel like we are as an industry where things, I think studios think that things only do well um, in bunches. And like, <laughs> if, if an audience really likes this thing, let's just keep making more of this same thing until we d- drive it to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's more than in the ground. It's the crust <laughs> of the earth because I'm just like, we get it. But, you know, I think that a lot of this does go back to Marvel. I think Marvel is to blame, right? Like, superhero movies are easy, and I think that they're easy in that, like, yeah, they cost a lot of money, but, like, the audiences are very faithful. And I think that, like, this feels like a departure from the previous example, which was, uh, or like the previous example, but like the, the the sort of like loop that, you know, movies were caught in before this, um, mm-hmm. which would be Star Wars, right? Like Star Wars was in this loop of like, well, let's make another one. You know, let's make another mm-hmm. one. Let's make another one. But like the nerds are like smaller in numbers than the populace <laughs> of people who are going to see Marvel, right? Now everyone yeah. goes to see Marvel. They've made it a point to sort of appeal to a wider range of people through things like Black Panther, through things like casting choices, right? Like, yeah. and I think that, you know, they pretty much, unlike Star Wars, which was really just like, if you're a nerd, we got you locked in for the next 40 years. Marvel is like, if you're anybody, we got you locked in. And why don't you go? Why don't you go watch your Disney app and see what shows we've now made? And now you've yeah. got She Hulk and Loki and WandaVision. and so you're like, well, I liked this show, and I'm not seeing a ton of Marvel movies. Well, now there's this great cat, like great in quotes, because it's expensive. Uh, um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I I do think. What is your general feeling towards 
IP or franchises? Well, I feel like I'm like, this is cute, but enough, right? Like, I do think that, like, we need to be able to say, okay, we're going to do a little franchise situation and, like, we're not going to ride this till the wheels fall off. We're going to make it. And if that means we're setting, we're sitting down and the goal is like four films, or if it's like three films and a spinoff with two films, like I just, I need, I need parameters around it because I feel like what ends up happening is like, or what's happened to me, at least with Marvel is I watched, like I said, all those movies in order. So everything that came out up until Black Panther. And then I realized I hate Dr. Strange. So, oh, yeah, we did have this conversation. Yeah, I'm not interested in watching anything else he's doing. And then I was like, okay, well, uh, Captain America movies hit or miss for me. So, like, mm, this next one, I'm not that interested. So, what ends mm-hmm. up happening is like, because the web is so big, right? Like, mm-hmm. pretty much anything after the Avengers and we get this, this snap, I'm just sort of like, well, I've stopped watching because there's too mm-hmm. much or I'm not into the characters. And it's like, I didn't watch Loki. I didn't watch this. I didn't watch that. And so now we've got this new, I was about to say Rocket Raccoon, Adventures, Guardians, Galaxy. Oh yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm like, what references will I not get because I've tapped out of everything post yeah. the Avengers. It wasn't, I don't know, whatever, whatever the last one was of the first phase. And that's another thing. Why are there phases? Enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I'm like, whatever yeah, I, one <clears throat> post snap, that's when I tapped out. <laughs> Marvel definitely, uh, to your point, is the is gonna get most of the blame for this, and as they should. Um, I've generally felt that Marvel sort of change the way studios look look at movie making, mm-hmm. right? Because I think Disney sort of like put the blueprint out, like this is what max profit looks like. Um, and in order for you to get max profit is, you know, sort of like have your key ca- cake and eat it too mentality. <laughs> hey, we're going to give you this story. You like this story. We're going to strip this story into parts, make a sequel prequel out of that. And then like, once we make the sequel prequels out of that, we can then, because now every studio has their own streaming platform, we can then make TV series out of the same IP right. that maybe we take the prequel and make a TV series out of it. Um, and we're sort of like seeing that prop up everywhere, right? I think Netflix does that, right? Netflix has Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I've heard after Stranger Things end, they're going to have sort of like a prequel or something like that. Now, it's um, like, I don't need to go to the 1950s. Leave me alone. <laughs> like, I leave it. Leave it. Leave it. And so that's kind of, that's sort of the blueprint, right? And it's, it's the same thing over at HBO, right? With Game of Thrones. Um, Game of Thrones ended and they were like, here's seven different prequels yeah, and sequels wild. that we can explore. Um, because we know, like, fans really love this world. Why leave it to try something new that may or may not work? when we have subscribers num- numbers to hit. And so that it all becomes part of this, like it's to your point, it's hit or miss, right? Like, because you might get a prequel that's really good, right? Like Breaking Bad ended and they did the prequel to Breaking Bad. And I thought mm-hmm. that one was really good. Right. But largely mm-hmm. it's, it's, I don't think a lot of it is because, you know, there's so much story to tell that like, they just have to split it up. It just becomes of like, this is really successful. And so we want to use that as sort of a springboard for a whole slate, which is like Harry Potter, for example. Like, I feel like there's so much Harry Potter IP out there. Well, I think something that's interesting is like, Harry Potter to me felt like this is kind of the appropriate pace, right? Like, it was like, these are the books. So it's like 90, like seven to 1997 to like 2007, right? So 10 years, we got all these books. And it's like, okay, now halfway through us getting books, we get in movies, but the books are coming out before the, the movies, right? And so it's like the final book is released and I don't think we get the final film till like five or six years later. So I'm like, that didn't feel like overkill, right? Like, if you read the books, you had ten. You were re- 
on time that was over 10 years. And there was a little overlap, which was really cool to see this world building. I do yeah. think that like, you know, some other things have come out of it, right? Stage plays and like sequel books, but people don't really like, I mean, sequel movies, people don't really like the sequel movies, but I'm like, okay, now that's where we needed to cap it. Like that's where we needed to be like, thank you so much. We now have a vault of rides of, you know, you can go to London and do the tour and the movies <laughs> and the, but like enough, that's perfect. But now we're bringing it back and I'm like, it's too soon. And it's really to me falling into the trap of, what's happening with Marvel. And, you know, it's just like every, every six months, there's a new Marvel something. And yeah, it's exhausting. It, the integrity, it can't be maintained because editing. Yeah. There's so much CGI. Right. And, I, and the quality. I, yeah. And I think the other thing that Marvel, Marvel <laughs> didn't have this problem. Stranger Things had this problem, but Marvel's now dealing with this problem is like, when you commit to these stories that require the same people, you're really taking a gamble. And so it's yeah. like, in the instance of Stranger Things, I'm like, everybody had puberty. And yep. and, and this is supposed to be like three weeks after the last. It's, they were children. It's too much. And that's happened. You know, Harry Potter, I think they paced it relatively well. Mm -hmm. um, relatively, like, uh, yeah, they was looking older than 17 by the time they graduated, but, like, try to fight Lord Voldemort will age you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, obviously, Marvel is now going through a version of this with Jonathan Majors. For sure, for sure. Put him in this major role, you cue him right. up, and there's no way yep. for you to anticipate what's about Yeah, unless happen. you, like, lock him in a vault. Truly, like, <laughs> so now, now what, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. Um, I think people have... Yeah. Marvel got really lucky, man. <laughs> now that you bring that up, and I think a lot of it is because I people always ask me, um, like, what made Marvel's run so successful slash... Yeah. Um, let's use, like, magical, for lack of a better word. Yeah. And a lot of it is luck. A lot of it is timing. Right. And obviously it takes a lot of skill to plan out, you know, the past, let's say what, 2008 to 2023, yeah. how many years that is. Yeah. Um, it, it does take skill, but I think it takes a lot of luck. Right. Because as we're seeing, if you decide you're going to bank your next seven years on six people. Truly. Your child. Truly. In the social media <laughs> era, that's crazy. In the social media. And that's another thing, too, because the from like 2008 to like 20, probably like 15 or 14, it wasn't like social media wasn't hyper vigilant as it is now. Right. Right. And the era of like, you know, Twitter and just the speed at which inform information is disseminated, judged, and we move on to the next thing. Like nowadays, everything's under a microscope way more than it was in 2010. So, I mean, they're, they're finding it themselves to your point. Like that luck is going to run out. I mean, you know, I think that it's also really interesting because you're making these gambles that like audiences are still going to be interested. And I think like, I, I think that for some of them, for some of the audience, like there are some people that are going to show up no matter what, right? Like th they're just yeah, like the Uber fans. Yeah, like I am MCU, right? But then there's people like me where I'm just like, I'm just overwhelmed and I'm not yeah. even interested in tapping into a new thing because yeah. I don't know how much of it I'm not going to get. And I think yeah. that, like, the further that this keeps going, the more mm -hmm. the people may, might feel like me. Are there going to be enough of us to make them be like, all right, hang the hats up? Absolutely not. Like, they're going to keep going. But I do just sort of think that, like, you know, I've heard people talk about She-Hulk and just sort of be like, I don't even understand this plot. <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> and now I'm over it. I haven't even watched that one. See? So. And that's what I'm saying. I haven't. And so it's like, when are you going to watch it? Like it's, I mean, it's past me at this point, but if they do another season, I don't know what the new phase is and what that means. Yeah. But like, 
Yeah. And it, at which point do you just say, like, I don't have time to go back and watch that. So either I'm going to be confused or I'm just not going to watch. I had to make a conscientious decision that the TV shows, okay. I can't keep up with every single one. Okay. Like, it's just... Which <laughs> ones are you watching? Or did you watch? Uh, so I, I just saw... I'm definitely watching the movies. Okay. So I just saw Guardians last uh, uh, this past okay. weekend. Um, and that was really great. And part of the reason why it was great is because you could watch that. It's really well grounded. Like you can like yeah. not have a lot yeah. of uh, knowledge of um, the rest of the universe and whatever. And just be able to watch this film and like okay. get the emotional stakes, mm -hmm. the characters and the journey and it ends. Okay. Good for them. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's yeah. a choice. Well, also. So that that franchise is over. Right. That was the third one of the trilogy, and now it's done. Right. So that was the last of the franchise, and the person that did it, James Gunn, is now going to DC. So now he's done with Marvel. Um, mm. But I say that to say they're not all like that, right. right? Like to your point, there is somewhere there is some coming that involves some of the characters in the TV shows. And sis, <laughs> I'm gonna go and let God. I'm gonna just. <laughs> I get if I get it, I get it. If I don't, that's what Wikipedia. That's what, that's what Wikipedia is for. Yep. Uh, Might have to spark notes this yeah, one. Yeah, because I can't. You know, I I can't help but wonder, like, at any point, you know, do they edit the stories that they choose to make? You know what I mean? Like, are there shows where they're like, yeah. "This was greenlit," and you know what? Like, mm, mm, is this? character really <laughs> central to the next thing and are people gonna want to venture out like and like i saw black panther do mm -hmm. and i, I i'ma be honest i didn't like a lot of it like which one the yeah, second, the second one? one i didn't think the second one was good at all yeah i think i mean you know angela bassett did do the thing but i'm like outside of that sure i was just sort of like this is this sort of doesn't make any sense they're fighting as a movie, thank They're you. Fighting. As a film, yeah, they they need to be. Why these these people would be friends? <laughs> yeah, I never under. I kept saying <laughs> this to people, and I know this is not a Black Panther <laughs> podcast, but I never understood no. the protagonist and antagonist story no. because it felt forced. I just it didn't feel. I real. was like people that are proud of the indigenous lands that like is theirs are not beefing with each other. Like, Namor Yeah, I think has, they, they should have reworked yeah, that. They should have reworked that. There's somehow. no incentive for that. And so now what I think that does for me is me to be like, well, I was only here because y'all was black. The story wasn't even hitting that much. I mean, I'm just being honest. So now I'm like, I'm even less incentivized to tap in to the next thing. Like, yeah. I'm not going to go see Rocket Raccoon the third, you know? I <laughs> <laughs> I know that I've enjoyed that character and I get like yeah. I it's, but I just am like I just don't trust it. So I don't know. I say that to say that like I don't think there's enough, you know, people like me who are like Meh. but I beg to differ though, okay. because I would say this sort of like brackets into the second thing I was gonna ask, but I would say that although let's say 2020 and on after Endgame, which is like when all the people got snapped and that was the end of that. And then Captain America said they didn't want to play anybody. All those people died or whatever. Yeah. After <laughs> that ended. Wow. And then they were like, we're going to continue making more of these. The slate of TV shows and movies have been less than stellar. And I'm being nice by saying <laughs> it like that. And because of that, because of that, yeah. right. The Venn diagram that you were talking yeah. about, right. There's like, there's a Venn diagram of like the super fans mm -hmm. The no fans, but will tap in whenever. Right. And then there's the middle of like the super fans and the people that like yeah. enjoy a good movie. Like if it's good, they're going to say it's good and they're going to come back. That Venn diagram is increasingly, there's no middle. Okay, now. we're getting And even circles. the people that are on, <laughs> even the people that are like the super fans have started to sort of like push back on the quality of the things right. that they're getting. Mm -hmm. Right. Which then to me, has made me sort of like, um, I, I've sort of been asking myself, like, what makes a successful franchise? Because to, to Disney, these are relatively still successful. 
100%. Right? So like the Thor Love and Thunder that came out last summer yeah. made a ton of money right. but was not good. Right. So Yeah, I'm like I, you know? I didn't I did not see that. Um I know someone who worked on it and was like I wanted a Marvel check and I said, "Gotcha." I got it. <laughs> Say less. They were like, I can't even tell you to go see this. <laughs> but um, I think that for me, the success really comes to, you know, over, like, is it overload? Right? Like, it, right. Ugh, like give me respite. You know what I mean? I also think another thing, and I'm, I'm workshopping how to say this and this is not a Sam Levinson podcast, but uh, <laughs> that man is so involved in the industry. Um, you know, something that I think about a lot is how he, um, you know, famously writes all his shows himself, right? And in the pilot episode, right. Nate, that family photo, where's that third brother? You know what I mean? Like, there was three, mm -hmm. three little boys, and throughout this entire show, we've only seen two, and everyone was like, where's this third brother? And I think that what that really illustrates is that, like, audiences are paying attention. Like, they're paying attention right. to little details. We've been trained, thanks to, like, Jordan Peele, you know, other people as well, but I feel like Jordan Peele has really been a, a, a force in the, the, you know, watching for comprehension, watching for Easter eggs um, sort of culture. And I feel like, a good IP has to make sense because audiences are paying attention. Like the stories have to make sense. The stories have to connect. I need you to make sure that the motives of this character when they were in one and a half episodes of somebody else's show on Disney Plus makes sense right. when they come over to this Marvel movie because people care about that now, right? Like, and I just, for I sure. think that so much of that gets lost and it's not necessarily even a reflection of like, well, who's writing? Like, it's like, no, like that comes down to props. It comes to editing. It comes to story directing. It comes to direction. Like it comes to so many different parts. And I feel like this is just such a big machine. Well, Marvel's such a big machine that I'm like, yeah, sometimes I'm just like, that, you know, that's how we get the Black Panther situation where I'm like, the, we lost the plot, folks. Mm -hmm. Like we lost it. We really did. We truly <laughs> did. Yeah. And I think it's 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 because everything's like homogenized and it's one person makes all the decisions sure. and they try to bring in um I was having this conversation this weekend um with a bunch of my friends uh after seeing this movie and we were like, Well, who's left that can still tell a singular story? Um, within the Marvel universe, and you still get like that feeling of like, yes, this is a superhero movie, but like I watched a movie, right. and like I, I like because what's happened with a lot of the movies that have come over the past three years is they they all feel like they they went through the Marvel system, yeah. and you just get like this bland. The thing. story isn't compelling, um, but it's like. Fight in the sky, fight with laser beams, yeah. <laughs> fight with time travel. And you're like, okay, but like, I can go home and watch that for free, right? Like, I'm yeah. paying money to see something. Ex yeah. you're, I, 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 think, yeah, I think we've maxed out the world building there. Like, We might have. We might have. I, I just think the stories need to be told in a different way. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this. I don't have much to contribute yeah. to this, but like, how do you feel that the uh, DC cinematic universe is doing with some of these things in comparison to Marvel? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think DC tried to do the Marvel thing. And what do you um, mean by that? By that, I meant in 20, uh, let's say 2014. Okay. DC realized how successful Marvel, Marvel's way of doing things, which is our IP and franchise mm -hmm. episode, mm -hmm. like what we're talking about, right? Like being able to sort of like get an IP, put a ton of different franchises together, have it all be in the same world, and you can maximize profit by having all these different characters and later on down the line, they'll meet together and stuff like that, right? Um, but what they sort of like missed the sort of point on when they tried to do that the first time 
was it took Marvel almost 10 to 12 years to get to the point that we're at in 2014. And DC tried to rush it and do it in three years. And so none of it connected and it all felt like a big pot of jambalaya, like a bunch of things kind of like thrown together and like, it didn't really make sense. The stories weren't compelling and they have really good, like popular marquee characters that are popular, like over the world. Right. But like, they didn't know how to like tell the story in an intricate way enough to be able to do that. Um, So I think they sort of learn their lesson, right? So like they tried that, it failed completely. Um, And that's when they sort of like the new (laughs) David Zaslav, which is like the new, the new head of Warner Brothers Discovery came in and said, well, how about we like not do that and sort of like go a different way and just go get someone who's really passionate about said IP Mm -hmm. and who's a really talented filmmaker and have them sort of come in and map out a plan and then they can sort of like tell that story over time that is not truncated. As opposed to right? like trying so, to build as you it's like it's like why don't you hire an architect as opposed to someone who's like, I'm gonna build a bridge. Uh yes. Just I'm I'm gonna order yes. the spots on Amazon and we're just gonna build figure out as yes. you go. Yes. A hundred percent. Now to finish my point, I hope so like that's where they're at, at now. So they they went and hired James Gunn and made him like the head of DC because he really cares about the property and he really knows how to like tell stories. Um, Now what I'm hoping is like James has obviously is finished with guardians of the galaxy and has been through that and they can learn from what has worked and what hasn't worked and what's going to work in the future. All those three things are very different, right? In the sense of like, there's what has worked, right? Which is the way Marvel did it. There's, what currently needs to be done, like, which is him doing. coming in, putting together, right, sort of like putting together a plan and marching forward. And there's what's going to work in the future. And to me, what that part hinges on is there's, there's superhero fatigue, uh, right? They just have to acknowledge the fact that I'm it's a thing. like, right? a bag, we get it, enough. Right, right. It's, it's a thing. And the reason why it's a thing is, and I and I know this turned into the we rag on Marvel and we hate Disney podcast, but it wasn't. <laughs> but it is, right? Like Marvel has made it so there is superhero fatigue because they flooded the yeah. market with, like you were saying, a new project every six months or three I'm months like, or whatever it is. <laughs> Literally. You and so I that. hope they can sort of like, I know. And it, it was sure. true, especially during the pandemic. During the pandemic, I feel like we were getting a new show. Like, every but you three know months. what? I do wonder if part of that too is because like these 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 entities are kind of easy to make at this point, right? Like they they've yeah, abandoned sure. storytelling, so it doesn't really have to make a ton of sense. Half of the thing is CGI anyway, right? So with the TV shows, yeah. which I feel like also don't have the big talent which is ironic because i'm like the big talent is contracted to kind of do this and nothing else like robert Downey jr wasn't doing <laughs> nothing after Thunder he sure was due date and until now you know um, so <laughs> it's like with the shows it's smaller talent it's only eight episodes but even then i'm like that's still more content than a, a movie like running time wise but it's mm-hmm. easier I feel like to make these shows because, yeah, they're all CGI and they're working the editors to the bone and the quality of the work is suffering. So it's. Yeah, that's like a whole other <laughs> conversation. In but it's just like all of these things together make made it so that like the pandemic really set them up to be able to do this quickly, you know? Yeah. And, you know. I'm not saying that, again, I'm a comic book fan. I like superheroes, but I also like stories. Like, I like things that are driven by characters and stories, because that's what people relate to. People relate to that. Um, And I'm not telling Marvel to completely shut it down and, like, pack it up. And obviously, they're not gonna, because... The movie, the superhero movie making business is nowadays a trillion dollar right. business. And don't let them fool you, writers. It is. <laughs> They're like, we know. 
Hopefully uh, right. Now. We wrote them. <laughs> I mean, oh, um, I- no. So yeah, like I, I'm not telling them to stop making these things. I would just, I, again, I think IPs and franchises, I think there's been some really cool IP in the, over the last couple of years. And I think one of them is John Wick. And I think John Wick sort of like caught on to popularity really quickly. And like the studio was like, oh, let's make more of that immediately. Right. And so like, <laughs> so like we're on the fourth John Wick and they're making the, uh, the spinoff with, uh, I think the woman version of John Wick was going to be called ballerina. Uh-oh. Again, yeah. to our point, whenever a studio sees something right. work, they just 19, like, and it, it doesn't even like, I, I know that um, the Equalizer 3 or 4 or something is coming out too. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, nope. it don't even make sense because I know that man is tired. And he, he tired. Be over here swapping. Let Denzel go in home. In and out of, okay, well, now your stunt double has to come in. And now you're like, he don't want to do all that. Okay, Bro. let him do his little, uh, what was it? His little Shakespeare production. In Facts. black and white, let him do his little fences. Okay, let that man adapt. He's at a point of his life, he's like, I want to adapt stage plays because I get to stand in one spot. And I love that for him. But, <laughs> you know, it's so funny because I think that, like, something that, you know, we've seen in other IP, and it sounds like John Wick is doing this too, but um, it's definitely coming with the new, uh, da, 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 what is this called? Uh, Indiana Jones. Oh, they yes. Do, like a passing. What's up with old guys reprising their roles? Like, that man is also. That like man said, listen, I'm in my glory days. And let me get this last big bag. Because that's what I think, too, right? Like, let's talk about that for a second. I feel like he now is like, I'm going to make so much money, no matter whatever it is that I do in this film. And it will dwarf probably what he's made in all the other movies. And I wouldn't be surprised if it dwarfs like what he made in the first and second Indiana Jones combined. That's probably like, so true. You know, it's something that's kind of interesting is like, I think um, in the music industry right now, a lot of people are selling their music catalogs and everyone's like, why are they mm-hmm. doing that? And I was listening to a uh, different podcast and they were like, well, right now this is what people are paying for catalogs. So if you're Justin Bieber, like you may never see $200 million in your lifetime because he don't want to tour, whatever. So why wouldn't you just sell your mm-hmm. catalog and go back to the studio and make more? You're going to see all that money once right That's so now. That's so true. As opposed to spacing that out until you're 70. And I feel like something similar may be happening with the reprisals where the studios are like, we want to keep building off of this. We want to keep building off of this, you know, fan base and the IP and the story, da 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 And if you show up for two minutes... Somebody in the audience will be gagged and then, you know, they will be (laughs) pressed and you can just keep doing this over and over and over again. And what I heard about the Indiana Jones situation is that I don't know who the girl is. Is it Phoebe Wallace Bridgers? Yep. Uh She's playing his like goddaughter or something and that they're kind of positioning this to shift so that like she's Indiana Jones like kind of thing. And I think that that's Oh, right, like, like this I didn't is know like that. the this is. I guess that kind of yeah, makes this sense. This might be the movie where they're like, "So long, Harrison Ford." Like he retired. Yeah, because he old anyway. So. so this is the movie where they're both in, and I wouldn't be shocked based off of what I was listening to if they said, "Okay, the next one it'll be just her." And I think that one thing mm-hmm. about that that I do think is smart is I do think that like that first movie I've not seen any of them, but I know that. Those movies came out what in the seventies, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. and culturally, a, a lot has changed in fifty years, and so I Very. think that like something about this that is kind of smart is like you can make some shifts to feel more modern yeah. and like basically reach a new generation that's going to see this and go home and tell their parents. There's this new movie called Indiana Jones, and the parents are gonna be like, "New." No. <laughs> uh, and that feels different. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I'm not too familiar with the Indiana yeah. Jones IP. I did see the trailer when I went to see Guardians, okay. and I was like, "Isn't Harrison Ford like? Years old? Why is he still?" Um, <laughs> but 
this kind of dovetailed, yeah. like like you said, it dovetailed really <laughs> nicely into our conversation. Because like, it's like, oh, it's kind of like Top Gun almost yeah. from last year. It's like they brought Cruz back to sort of like usher in the new And they were crowd. gagged. Everyone, I didn't see it, but everyone was like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I crazy. loved it. It was great. Yeah, it was great. Um, <laughs> but I guess to end, what like... I don't know how to frame this question, but what I really wanted to add what I want to ask is like, what would you like to see moving forward? Right. Cause I don't think we're going to stop seeing yeah. IPs or franchises, but like, what is like for you, the best path forward? Okay. Hear me out. I, I've not lost the plot, but hear me out. Okay. <laughs> I think there's an opportunity to start new IP right new or I should say I should start I should say this to start new franchises on existing intellectual mm-hmm. property or copywritten uh works and materials and just kind of doing whatever mm-hmm. you want with it and building a universe from that so what i mean by that is we're getting barbie right this summer greta gerwig i don't mm-hmm. even know mm-hmm. what this movie's about none of us know all we know is that ryan gosling said this is the best script he's ever read and he cr- you know, that's that. all we know. Okay. And I'm like, this is the man that gave us the notebook. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, that's <laughs> nuts. So I think that something like Barbie, which is an intellectual property in its own right, right, as a toy that doesn't have a story. Now let's build a world out of that, right? Like, and it doesn't have to be Barbie per se. Like, I'm not like championing the movie that we've not seen yet, but I'm like, I would love to see more things where there's really a storytelling feat in you taking something like Barbie, where the story really is, she's a doll and she does everything. Like, that's it. That's all we've got. Mm. And like, Mm -hmm. are there other Mm -hmm. instances where we have something that feels familiar, but like, there haven't been books and movies and video games and like rides, like, And there's not a story. And, like, let's build an interesting story out of that. Because, like you said, the stories are what, like, connect us to what we're watching. So I would love to see, like, the creative stretching that would have to happen for someone to be like, you know, I'm going to build something out of, you know, something that's familiar. And it can go really well or it can go really badly looking at you like Emoji Movie, right? But, like, Toy Story, (laughs) and I'm, I'm talking about kids, like, toys i know but like toy story is kind of like that right like that's something that's like kind of rooted like fundamentally if someone was like what's the one sentence you would say you know about this movie to like an alien who's never seen it i'd be like children's toys gone wild went unsupervised like period and like but they built four stories out of it and like it brings you back and you feel things and you you know there's nostalgia Mm -hmm. and there's growth and like there's an evolution and it's all off of just something so nebulous. So I hope that makes sense. I was, I was like, you gotta let me steer the boat here, but yeah, <laughs> it what did. about you? Well, my, my, my like first answer to you was studios only want to pay know. for writer's rooms. You think they're going to so, pay, you think they finna pay I for know. creative no, I'm stretching? Like, I'm like, ugh, we just need more Greta Gerwigs, you know, we need more, uh, we need more Jordan Peele's. <laughs> but yo, that is, I, I totally agree because like that's where sort of like the I don't want to call them one hit wonders, but that's where the original magic right. comes from, right? I feel like that's one of the reasons why people really love Knife Down. Yeah. It's because like it felt fresh when they first it was like someone that was like, yo, I watch Who Done It yes. all the time. I have a I have a very interesting take on a Who Done It. Yes. Right. Um, and then Netflix was like franchise boom and kill that <laughs> um but, but i i think um my answer is it's not going to go away and so what i would like to do is i would like very talented and out of the box filmmakers to make franchise movies so instead of the process being led by the Kevin Feige's of the world is Kevin Feige. Is the Kevin Feige is the leader oh, okay. of Marvel, 
is like the producer that okay. like has done all of them since two thousand. I was not tapped in. <clears throat> yeah, so that's him. Um, instead of like him having the creative control and direction of all of these movies, is like if you're doing franchises, unless it's a singular story that can only be told by one person. Um, I would like for these studios to invite more traditional filmmakers to make some of these movies and let them make their rendition on whatever the IP or franchise is that they want to make. Because that has proven to work most times. Um, so like, I like that instead of them like getting a filmmaker that they know they can walk all over and get their product out. And it, again, it, is, it just ends up turning out to be the same thing as we just saw. Well, we'll see. I'm like, we both can hope for more creativity, but obviously, like you said, writer strikes. I mean, you know, we'll see how this impacts other facets of all of Hollywood. But yeah, I think you're, I think you're definitely spot on. Like, it's not working. All that said, though, I'm going to be at the theater. Oh, and that's the I thing. I love that for you. Like, Marvel knows, you. Marvel knows, <laughs> Marvel knows, like, I can, I, I kick and scream all I want, but like, <sighs> uh, I'm going to go so see much it, for you. So. I'm like, <laughs> the TV well, shows, though, I'm way more picky. I ain't got time. I ain't got that's time. That's so funny. Because I'm like, I got other things like I'm like, that I can just put on in the background, right? I'm like, but you want me to spend 20 American dollars in this economy? You want me to give up my egg budget Truly. for the week to go Truly. see this? You know what I mean? Um, buys one carton of eggs or goes to the movies. I'm picking the eggs. But yeah, it's... I'm like... <laughs> Which is oh. like so true, though, because that's my biggest thing about theater going experience nowadays is it's so expensive that you need yes. to tell people that they're going to see a spectacle. Truly. Like it needs this to be worth it. This is four months of like the cost of my Discovery Plus subscription for two hours. Like I need this to hit. And I think. <laughs> and you got to imagine uh, people have kids. So like. The way. They either got to get a babysitter. They either got to get a babysitter or bring the kids, which is yeah, four I'm tickets. Like, mm -hmm. And that's 24 times four plus popcorn oh, and parking. Well, I'm like New York, gang, gang. So no parking. You're like popcorn. <laughs> I'm like, sweetie, what fits in this purse, gang, gang? And we're ah! going, we're, listen, True. if that's a chicken cutlet sandwich, guess what? <laughs> Ciao, Bello. It's going, going in, in there. there but yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely see how this shakes out uh, because obviously this... This recent Marvel movie came out, and I don't know what's next, but I'm sure they'll be releasing something else next week. So we'll see. The Marvels, I think, in November. Yeah. You probably Truly, know I'm that like, is. not the Marvels. Marvel. This we run out of ideas. So just re <laughs> re pronounce and re pronounce names. the name. Okay, I'm like that's what made it on the board. That that. Meanwhile, I'm over here like Mahershala <laughs> Ali cannot get this Blade film made to save his life. and Because you know what, though? He saw the first script and was like, I'm not doing this. This needs to be rewritten and forced people to rewrote it. They sent him a second version. He was like, that's not quite there yet. It needs to be rewritten That man again. is not... And that's not what we need. In anything. I don't like... He's not been in anything since Swan Song, which I feel like was 2021 or early 2022. <laughs> He has it because he really wants know, to do I'm this. Like free, free my guy. Okay, free him from. But they're making, they're writing <laughs> mid. So he said, "Get back in the lab, or I'm not get coming out and of my now house." The writer strike. I, I'm like, see, you should have taken that. Yep. <laughs> now you're not gonna see I, him till like 2025. Mid script, because baby, you got rent to pay too. <laughs> I, I know you not. I know you did. He did what? Yeah. That moonlight check That's has probably dried like, out. <laughs> Listen, no shade, but you know, it's for another year in this economy from Herschel Ali, too. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> we will be back next week to talk about something different, but also the writer strike because these CEOs keep playing, and I don't think it's ending in the next few days. So, sure ain't. Mm. well, talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.